Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my channel. This is the original, the one and only Silo Man, coming to you from an underground launch control facility in a former Atlas F intercontinental ballistic missile base outside of Roswell, New Mexico, USA. Well, over the next 15 minutes, I hope to be taking you through a pretty interesting site. You're going to see us start to work on this over the next few months. This is a site, what we call Site 10 in Roswell, the former 579th Strategic Missile Squadron, which was stationed at Walker Air Force Base, Roswell, New Mexico. In these pictures you're about to see, the live action, that used to be the old water treatment facility, which at that point you can see the well just behind the pump, just behind the, uh, the vehicle there. We'd pump, they'd pump the water up and then the water treatment facility would treat it. You can see us starting to pan around. And there you have it, there's Kerry. He's the owner of this site. This site has its silo doors open. You're, I think you're gonna enjoy this. And Kerry's just simply doing a little work around his site. He invited us out and he's staying at my site so it really works out kind of nice. I've known Kerry for quite, for an awful long, long time. In fact, we used to play in this site when I was just a kid and that's been, what, almost 45 years. And you can see the silo doors there in the background. You can see the entryway there painted in white. Some more ideas. You'll see a few yellow cones, or orange cones, excuse me. Uh, and that was part of the septic tank system. That right there is the drain field. And as we're coming back around, and this is the first time I've ever shot live action, so please work with me if you would. And this used to just simply be a uh, one of the old roads that they could get access to the water treatment facility and then there was evaporation ponds and I'm sorry I didn't show you those probably within the next couple weeks today being the fourth day of April gives you a little idea part of the septic tank there in the foreground Now the fence that you see around what we call the silo cap area where the, the silo doors are opened, that is not original. Uh, this site was about 20 years ago leased out to a company called the Starlight. They put in an industrial laser. And I think, I can't remember if it was for 10 or 20 bucks, uh, you could you know, send your message to the heavens and they put it on this industrial laser and then shoot it up into space. And here we're coming into the area, what we call a silo cap. This concrete area you see on the right, that was for the fill and vent uh, shaft and that was for the gaseous, um, like liquid oxygen, like gaseous oxygen, uh, helium, liquid nitrogen, nitrogen, um, that's where the trucks would come in and they could park while they were offloading that into the tanks and it would come through that fill and vent shaft and you'll be seeing a close-up of it coming right up and you can see we're getting a little closer that's the true circumference of the an Atlas F uh, missile silo now we're coming over to where you can just about make out the fill and vent shaft here. Originally there was a little building, um, well it, it had a lean-to shelter on the top. And you can see the concrete pad there that where the trucks would come in to, to fill all that side of it up. One thing to remember when you're, you're dealing with this is a first generation ICBM site. It was you were dealing with liquid uh, oxygen and anytime it came in contact with a hydrocarbon, you know, even the most minute amount of a hydrocarbon and you had an explosion. And in fact, uh, of the original 12 sites surrounding Roswell or Walker Air Force Base, uh, three of those sites were destroyed uh, while the sites were operational. So you get an idea about uh, how terrible it could be. And again, there's the, and you can get a little close up view there of the silo. And I'm looking down, uh, my friends are down there. 
I mean, this is one of the most intact sites, naturally dry. You can see there, there was the elevator shaft. Right there where you're looking down would have been what we call the missile enclosure area. You can see where the trunnions were held and then the, the, the hydraulic rams were placed on those doors. Those doors are 75 tons. And probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing a little closer, so we'll give you a much better idea what's down there. Part of the vent you can see there is what we call the gaseous oxygen vent. What a fun sight. And here we have what we call the, the communication manhole. The lid, of course, has, has been removed. And that's where a lot of the communication equipment came in underground and then from there into the, what we call the launch control center. And this is the entryway itself. Escape shaft there to the right. The small stub up there that you see, that would have been the air exhaust shaft to the launch control center. Where we're walking over right here would have been originally the, the water tanks. And as we're coming to the entryway itself, we'll come in just a few feet. Electricity is due to be put in here between now and the end of summer. And you can see looking down the stairs uh, of the entryway. We do have temporary lights. We bring out a power plant and fire it up. This area you're seeing here where this cone is, that originally held the water tanks, which held about 92,000 gallons of water. Those steel tanks were removed when these sites were salvaged between uh, mid-1965 and 1968. That small candy cane black pipe that you see in the background there, that's the sewer vent uh, for the launch control center in the bottom of the stairwell and these are all things you're going to be seeing in time. Uh, I did the cleanup on this site, oh gosh, probably 15, 16 years ago. And there you'll have it, there's the uh, escape shaft to the uh, launch control center. Originally it held four tons of dry sand and then there was a cover over the top of it. Um, I of course removed all of that sand about 15, 16 years ago and it, it would allow me to bring things up easier when I was doing the cleanup on the upper and lower level of the control center. And here we're just walking between, in essence, the, the entryway and the silo cap area. You, again, you can see the, the sewer vent there to the left. And again, this fence is not original. You'll notice this little concrete area. You'll see there, there's an orange cone right there. That's what we call the columnator, uh, the site pad itself. And in, in essence, back then we had to, uh, in order for the inertial guidance system to really know, you had a missile had to know in essence where it was at. And I mean perfectly, because in order to get where you want to go, you have to absolutely know where you're beginning from. And this was all part of that system. It is not like today, of course, with all the satellites and the GPSs that we have. And this was originally a road. This is where they would back up the missile. And they would turn around and then they would back it, raise the silo doors, raise the launch platform. And then the truck would move very, very close to the launch platform. On the other side was what we call a very, very large cherry picker in essence. And, and it would pick up the missile itself and put it on the uh, launch platform. That concrete area with the pilings that you see there in the background, that was what we call the cooling tower pad. Um, there was two uh, diesel generators. Uh, on levels five and six of the silo. Of course, they've been removed, but uh, that was a, a basically a cooling tower for the diesels and also the water chillers and any of the other ancillary equipment. Again, that road. And you'll notice there's three upright posts way, way in the back. Originally, those were white, but just through the last 50 plus years, you can see and again, the truck with the missile on it would pull all the way up to that, then stop and then back up. 
On the right, you can see in the, uh, the short distance, uh, those, are, those are two Quonset hut pads. The Quonset huts have been removed. Those pads are 40 feet wide and 100 feet long. And right here, you can get a little better closer view of us walking to the end of the, the original little road. And then looking over at the Quonset hut pads. Oh, we're currently just using it for storage right now. In the left, you can barely make out what would be called the uh, uh, behind the little water treatment building would have been the evaporation pond. It was a very, very double evaporation pond. And you can look back through the other side of the road in the other direction. Right now we're north and we're looking south. Now we're coming around to the west. There are the mountain that you can see right there uh, in the background, that's Capitan. What a fun project. We'll be bringing in power, obviously, first, and we'll be working on uh, some new doors and getting the blast doors uh, completely operational. These are all the things we'll be doing over the next few months. And there I'm just walking back around between the silo cap area that we call it. You can see again, there's the sewer vent and the entryway you see right there. There's a vent there on the right, the stub up. It was originally a very, very large candy cane. That was the air exhaust for the launch control center. <clears throat> And then on the left here, you can see the stub up also. That would be the air intake for the launch control center. And again, there's a communication manhole. And right now, I'm just walking <coughs> to the west, and then you'll see as we go, as I go over the, uh, the septic tank and the drain field. This is an 1,800-gallon septic tank. A little overkill for just a five-man working crew. And then it's got the distribution box you see there with the plate on top. And then where the cones are, that's where the the, uh, <clears throat> the drain field lies and the, the vents for the drain field. And then looking back towards the, the well itself, there are two wells on the property. That's one of the pumping units. The little building's been torn down. You can see the water treatment facility again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very, very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope to please subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, please like it, uh, share it, tell your friends, leave a comment. Would always love to hear from folks. And again, if there's anything we can do, please don't hesitate to let me know. And thank you.